Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So, Randy, using the ICFX options, you probably wouldn't want to buy a 10-month uh, option and sell a one-month because the 10-month is going to have a lot bigger vega, uh, and you'd have more dollar risk to begin with, and then you would have more vega risk. I think maybe that's what Paul is alluding to. I'm not sure. But, I mean, is that why you try to stay, you know, into the three-to-one month or the two-to-one month because of that, you know, that vega risk, Randy? It's partly that because you're right. It will the long the further out you go, you're going to have a, a higher vega risk. You're also the overall the cost of that longer term option is going to be a whole lot higher. So you're not going to get much of an offset in the price of the short term option. You're going to have to do what we talked about earlier, which is I'd have to if I bought a December and sold a January, then in, then I'd have to sell a February, then a March, then an April. I'd have to do a lot of transactions over the course of several months in order to get the overall cost of that longer term option down for both for two reasons because of time value and because of, of vega. Uh, I stay short term on almost all of my option trades that I do and spreads especially because I well I mean I, let me give you the simplest analogy that I can use and I use this a lot when I'm discussing these types of things in in live environment is that I like to think of it myself as a weather forecaster if I if my job is to tell you what the weather is tomorrow and you say well what's the weather going to be tomorrow you know today in Austin it's like 82 degrees I could probably forecast that tomorrow it's going to be about 82 degrees, and I'm probably going to be pretty right. But if you ask me what's the weather going to be next week, Wednesday, I'm, my, my, my ability to be accurate goes way down. And the reason I keep most of my option trades close term is because I'm a lot more accurate at predicting where the market's going to be on whatever it is I'm trading in the next month than I am on predicting where it might be three, six, nine months down the road. It's just very hard to forecast where that's going to go. And these days in this market, I mean, for crying out loud, we've lost 50-some percent in the last 15 months. And then here within just the last week, we've had a 10% rebound. Who could have predicted that? I mean, I think we, a lot of us knew it was going to happen at some point in time. I thought it might happen in, back after the November lows. I was wrong as could be. We got clobbered, right? We had a little rebound in December, but then January and February were awful. So who knows where it's going? I can predict a couple weeks out pretty well. I can't predict several months out. It's very hard to do that. So... Those are the two reasons why I keep fairly short term. This, in this case, the trades are cheap. If I, you know, if I have an opinion after the second month and everything's gone and I still want to take a position, why not? I can just do a whole new trade. I don't need to just keep that long leg out there. I can just start all over and do a completely new spread. Right, right. Uh, let me ask you a question, Randy. Do you ever use these? And I think the, uh, you've actually showed a couple, so uh, I'm probably asking a question that you're going to say, Steve, it's obvious that I'm doing this. But do you ever use biases when you're trading these calendars? And I think you did give us an example or two of that, because normally when I'm teaching these, it's a sort of a neutral strategy, but you did allude to the idea that you can create a little bit of a bias by picking an upside strike or a downside strike. Exactly, and, that, and that's kind of what I was saying was that your bias is, should, your bias is all about your short term. You're, you should have, you've got, two, you've got two sentiments, you've got near term and you've got long term. Long term bias determines whether you use puts or calls. Near term bias determines what strike price you pick. If your near-term bias is it's going to go down, then you make sure you pick a strike price that's below the current level. If your near-term bias is that it's going to go up, then you pick a strike price that's above the current market price. But your long-term bias determines whether you use puts or calls. So again, generally I'm trying to go fairly neutral, and I'll typically pick a strike price that's pretty close to where it's at currently, um, but it's very easy to put a little bit of a bias one way or another based on what you think might happen in the short term just by adjusting the strike price above or below. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense, Randy. Uh, why don't we give uh, Randy an, an, uh, you know, uh, maybe one or two more questions. If you guys have any, um, I want to give you guys uh, just you know, all the attendees another minute or so to type in anything you may be thinking about. And please, uh, check out Charles Schwab. You know, they obviously have more than just options trading, as Randy was saying. Um, they, you know, basically have anything you'd like to trade. Um, so you can definitely check out Schwab at Schwab.com. Um, and Randy, where can uh, investors sort of um, 
you know, just get in contact with you. Are you going to be doing any sort of live presentations where they could ask you a couple questions if they, you know, they may have a question and they sort of, you know, can't think of it uh, right now? Are you going to be anywhere in the future, or is there a way that they can contact you at Schwab? If anybody wants to send me an email, they're welcome to do that. Um, you can, uh, my, I'll give you my email address. It's randy.frederick at schwab.com. I, I do a lot of client events, and I'm not afraid to give out my email. I can't promise you I'll always answer you the same day that you send it to me because I do travel a lot, but I will always answer. I always have. So I'm, I'm happy to do that. Well, that's great, Randy. It looks like we're all good. Uh, calendar spreads, first of all, Randy, I want to say thank you. Is that uh, Since I've been doing this, been the host for the last year and a half, two years, we, I don't think we've done the calendar spread. And I actually love calendar spreads for the, you know, some of the reasons you uh, described. It, it's a low-risk strategy. Uh, and you can, um, in that last spread, you showed that you paid two bucks and you could have made a buck and a half. Well, obviously that's a great. Trade. I like limited risks. I mean, I think we all understand now there are the risks are great. And as you said, the market was down 50% in the last 15 months. And options allow you to have limited risk. So why not use that? Oh, I see one more question, Randy. You mind taking it? You see that one from George? Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.